So all eyes will now be on Abuja. That's why I in a case. Makwe. Well, I'm already getting snippets behind the scenes as to what precisely uh, led to the, uh, you know, the move-in. And it's almost the same thing. There's nothing special that I've been listening to, so don't get worried about that. But I have with me in the studio right now uh, Mr. Mohamed Haruna, who is a National Commissioner and Member, Information, Voter Education and Publicity Committee of INEC. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much. Well, you are in the eye of the public now, not you personally, but yeah. INEC. INEC. And you are one of the national commissioners who took part in the decision-making uh, to eventually move the polls. Yeah. Uh, what was the thinking of the commission while you were there? Uh, I think the uh, chairman has already spoken to that. You remember yes. when he addressed uh, the, so some of the stakeholders on Saturday, that it is the Saturday when the election would have taken place. He did say why it happened, which was essentially a logistics problem. You know, perhaps we uh, really underestimated the scale of the logistics that was, to be, that was involved. Uh, this is an election in the country for the first time where 73 candidates were contesting for the presidential elections. Uh, altogether, over 23,000 can candidates were contesting for various constituencies. Now, you could say, well, but you knew all this. Yes, we do. We did. But, you know, when the material started coming in, and part of the problem, of course, was that there were some delays in our giving the go-ahead for the printing of the sensitive materials, that is, uh, ballot papers, uh, resort sheets, and so on. Delays occasioned by litigations, you know, because if we had gone ahead and told the, uh, the printers, go ahead, and then we excluded or included some parties that should the courts finally ruled that shouldn't be included or excluded, there would have been a problem, because we would have had to reprint the ballot papers altogether. So by the time we now, the, these materials started coming in, they were coming in huge quantities that we didn't think, you know, we didn't imagine would be that big. You know, all the hands were in deck to move them. The CBN, uh, the governor of CBN himself personally, and I must commend him, was involved. Inspector General of Police, because we get police to escort the materials, you know, just like they do for our currencies. Uh, the chief of air staff, all of them personally were involved in trying to evacuate these materials. But problems of weather, problems of uh, inadequate equipment. For instance, there was, at a point in time, there was only one uh, forklift to move things in and out of aircrafts. So all these problems, by Friday, we were still hoping, because all these hands were on, on deck, and everybody who would be involved, the Navy, everybody was involved in trying to move these things. We were still confident that we'd be able to meet the target. So I want but, to come back um, from you now. Hmm. The decision to move it was a unilateral one by all the commissioners. You mean so unanimous Manic. one? Yes, yes, it was unanimous by all, the, pardon, all unanimous of us. One. Yeah. And um, you, you saw that it was the best decision to, make, to take in the light of the circumstances that you have explained. Absolutely. Uh, I was just telling you before we came online that, you know, there's a house I say, which is the Mugun Rawago Makintashi. That is uh, literally... It's better for you to sit down and get up and dance a terrible dance. We had absolutely no uh, doubt that if we had gone ahead, we would have danced a very terrible dance because uh, sensitive materials had not reached all parts of the country. And when you're going to have uh, uh, the presidential election, not just the presidential election, remember we were going to have three sets of elections that day, the presidential, senate, and the national assembly. If materials had not reached such that would open at the polls at exactly 8 a.m., at least, you know, give or take 30, one hour, you know, there was no point going ahead with the, uh, the election. Because if we did, you can be sure we would be the first to be accused of some funny things, you know. Well, you're was, still being um, accused now. We are still being the accused. The accusations are still coming in thick and fast. Yeah. The APC held a caucus meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. and they were very... Uh, clear, they were very categorical that you were collaborating with the opposition People's Democratic Party. That's a very funny accusation to make. If we remember only late last year, 
it's the PPDP we are supposed to have uh, been collaborating with were the ones that led the demonstration. If you remember, it was led by Bukola uh, Saraki himself, the Senate president, right to our premises and demanded the resignation, the sack of our chairman and Mrs. Amina. This was shortly after the Osho elections. These are the people we are supposed to be working with. You know, so I, I, I don't understand it. Mm. You, you've also seen that, uh, I don't know whether you've seen some of the refutals put out by mm. uh, the, is it the NAMA, I think, mm -hmm. uh, saying that there was nothing wrong with the weather. So you shouldn't blame, I next shouldn't blame the uh, weather. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'll be surprised if NAMA will say that because certainly there were problems with the weather, especially the first day. Because the aircrafts were there, they were, were just about the way. When some of them, there was one that was heading for, I think, Meduguri. It couldn't land in Meduguri, so it had to come back mm. before uh, eventually we, we were able to deliver the, the, the materials for Meduguri. Well, you have, yeah. you have already said that proverb, you know, mm. it's better not to stand up than to get up and dance a terrible dance. Yeah. And Nigerians will be hoping that when Saturday comes, you will not be dancing a terrible dance. So we're looking forward. We will not be dancing a terrible, terrible you know, they, dance. So you have put out yeah. a checklist. They want mm. to know whether you are now complying with the checklist that you have already put out there. I'd like to read some of the um, articles, some mm. of the items on the checklist. You're talking about the completion, confirmation of deployment of materials, by Monday, 18th of February, mm -hmm. um, configuration of the smart card readers, which should have happened between Sunday and Thursday. Mm -hmm. Is that still ongoing? Is that ongoing? By yesterday, 4 o'clock, 5, we had already achieved 96% of the reconfiguration. Because actually it's reconfiguration. By yesterday? The, by yesterday, we had achieved uh, over 96% of the reconfiguration. Remember of how many smart card readers? I, I, I can't remember the total choir number now. But all the smart card readers, because we couldn't hold the election on Saturday, it meant we had to reconfigure it because they were configured to start, to, to start functioning at 8 o'clock and shut down by 10 of that Saturday. So because we didn't, uh, it didn't, we didn't hold the elections, we now had to reconfigure them. So we recalled all of them back to our state headquarters. And I'm sure by this morning, they probably have all been reconfigured already. But as I said, as at yesterday evening, uh, we had achieved over 96%, uh, you know, of the reconfiguration. Well, you're seeing and some the, controversy mm, in some states now over mm, the receipt of uh, sensitive materials, the retrieval mm, of sensitive materials. Mm, and, you know, you're finding that party agents and INEC and some uh, journalists are going to the CBN to go and see whether indeed these materials are complete. Mm, uh, how many of the states do you have controversies in and how are you resolving them? I don't know if we have really controversies. I thought, you know, once we decided that we were not going to hold the elections, we knew were duty bound to recall all of them and take them back to CBN before we are accused of tampering with them. So we made the, all, all the arrangements. And for virtually all the states, in fact, I don't know of any state where we had not, you know, uh, recalled the materials and given them to CBN for custody. So I don't know what controversies it is there you're talking about. Maybe this morning, I don't know. In but as state, that, for instance, there that, was controversy and, mm, you know, is it the party agents? It's, party it's, agents mm. and INEC and, you know, INEC had to keep reassuring them that indeed the materials are intact, they have not been tampered with, uh, so forth and so on and so forth. You haven't heard any of those kinds of controversies? I, I personally haven't heard any of those controversies. You know, I, I'm hearing about the AKT1 from, the, from you now this morning, but... It, the, the thing is, it, it, it was very important that we recall them and, and, and give to CBN for custody. You know, and of course we, want, we wanted the party agents as well as the media to be there. If a kitty happened, that would, be a, that would be an exception. But generally speaking, we, we, we all have these materials and we are ready now to start redeploying them from uh, Wednesday. But we, we are going to start batching by tomorrow. We have to batch them, that is for, you know, the steps, the way the, the, the forward logistics. We batch them first from the CBN uh, strong rooms, uh, headquarters to our, to our state offices. Then from our uh, state offices, we batch them for what we call RACs, that is the, the, the registration area centers. You know, this is where 
we, we, uh, we have some uh, super racks, that is if you have more than one rack mm -hmm. in, in, in a place, like maybe two, three primary schools in them, we call them super racks. But all of them are racks because it's composed of racks. The super let, racks let me are, ask you about the card readers. You yeah. said that you have... Reconfigured. Yes, yeah. almost By this morning, I'm confident. Everything. Now the questions about mm. the number of the card readers that you have. Mm. Let me confirm from you. Did INEX say they have 180,000 card readers? Is that, what they, is that the figure they have? I think, yes, that's, that's, that's the figure we, we have. Well, yesterday at mm. APC's caucus meeting, mm. the, the chairman uh, raised question about mm. the number of card readers. They say that from what INEC has said, it seems that you only have 4,000 extra card readers. In the event that you know, card readers don't work in some parts of the country, mm. I want to know, first of all, how you intend to redeploy uh, or deploy um, an extra card reader. They think that every card reader in every polling unit should have a backup. Uh, if you have 100% redundancy, it doesn't make much sense, you know. The thing is, people, we, we I appreciate people's anger at what had happened, but people should also appreciate some of the problems we face. The chairman mentioned, for instance, the problems we had when some of our uh, offices were burnt. The whole card reader for, for uh, Anambra was burnt. So we now had to pick from those redundancies to make up, to co supply completely over 4,000 uh, card readers for one state. You don't need 100% redundancy to be able to meet up because you're you assuming that every card reader will break down. Mm. But it's rare. Just that confirming, you, yeah. is, is INEX still standing on, this, on the point that there will be no incidence forms? Absolutely. We've already reconfigured our ballot papers to take care of that. You remember, because of uh, incidences of abuse, accusations that our, our staff were abusing that. That's why we now reconfigured the, the ballot paper in such a way that now